In the beginning, before there was light, before there was matter, before there were stars, there was sound. The ancient texts don't say, in the beginning, God thought. They don't say, in the beginning, God visualized. They say, in the beginning was the word. For centuries, we treated this as poetry, a metaphor for communication. But today, modern physics is discovering that this ancient sentence is actually a formula for the structure of reality. Science calls it cymatics, the study of how sound frequency organizes physical matter. If you place sand on a metal plate and play a specific frequency, the sand doesn't just vibrate chaotically. It snaps into a perfect, complex geometric pattern. It creates a mandala. It creates order. If you change the frequency, the pattern changes instantly. Matter obeys sound. And when Jesus walked the earth, he wasn't just a moral teacher. He was a master of frequency. He understood that to change the physical world, whether it was a storm, a disease, or a dead body, he didn't need to touch it. He needed to resonate it. So take a breath. Open your mind. Because today we are going to decode the physics of the word. We are going to learn why your voice is not just a tool for speaking, but a tool for building reality itself. To understand the power of your voice, you first have to understand the nature of the solid world around you. Quantum physics has proven that what we call solid matter is actually 99.9999% empty space. So what makes a rock feel hard? What makes water feel wet? What holds your body together? Vibration. Atoms are just energy vibrating at specific frequencies. They are singing a specific song. Change the song, and you change the structure. Ancient civilizations knew this. From Tibetan monks to Gregorian chants, they understood that sound is the interface code of reality. Sound is the bridge between the non-physical thought and the physical matter. When you speak, you are literally compressing a thought wave into a physical sound wave that travels through the air and impacts the atoms around you. You are not just making noise, you are broadcasting a code. Now, look at the miracles of Jesus through the lens of cymatics. How did he perform his greatest works? He rarely operated in silence. He operated through command. When he faced the storm on the Sea of Galilee, he didn't pray silently. He didn't ask God to fix it. He spoke to the frequency of the storm. Peace, be still. He issued a counter frequency of absolute coherence and like the sand on the metal plate, the atoms of the wind and water had to rearrange. Chaos snapped into order when he stood before the tomb of Lazarus. He didn't perform CPR. He used sound. He shouted with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. A vibrational command strong enough to reverse the frequency of death. He demonstrated the mechanics of creation. Intention plus sound equals manifestation. Consider the fig tree. In Mark 11, Jesus speaks to a tree saying, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. By the next morning, the tree had withered from the roots up. He used sound to disrupt the biological cohesion of the plant. He destructured its matter with a word. This is the power of a focused acoustic signal. Most people believe the voice produces simple sound waves that travel through the air. But biophysics shows something far deeper. Your vocal cords don't create a single wave. They create layers of harmonic frequencies, and when these frequencies overlap, they form interference patterns, wave structures that fold into one another. When interference patterns align perfectly, they create standing waves. A standing wave doesn't travel forward like normal sound. It forms a field, a bubble of vibrating information around you. Some researchers call these scalar-like fields. Not because they violate physics, but because they behave as fields rather than traveling waves. Your voice creates geometry. Your voice creates structure. Your voice creates a field of resonance. This is why certain chants and prayers can be felt in the body. 
why a loving tone heals and an angry tone harms. Your voice is not just communication, it is coherent vibration shaping the space around you. And when Jesus spoke, he wasn't just giving orders, he was projecting a coherent harmonic field strong enough to entrain the environment. Storms calmed, bodies healed, matter reorganized, because the voice carries intention encoded in vibration. And coherent intention becomes a field powerful enough to reorganize the physical world. The Greeks had a word for this. When the Bible says the word, the Greek word is logos. Logos does not mean speech. It means blueprint, pattern, organizing principle. When you speak, you are releasing logos, a blueprint into the field. But here is the tragedy. Most people use their blueprint to reinforce their prison. We say, I am tired, I am broke, I am sick, I never get it right. We think we're describing life, but we're actually instructing it. Jesus tried to warn us, by your words you are justified, and by your words you are condemned. Not morally, mechanically, you are building the house of your life, using the bricks of your own voice. Jesus gave a specific instruction that almost everyone overlooks. Whoever says to this mountain, not whoever talks about the mountain, not whoever begs God to move the mountain. Jesus said, speak to it, because every problem, every mountain, is a vibrating field of energy, and you are a generator of frequency. To shift the mountain, the debt, the sickness, the fear, you must direct a coherent sound wave straight at it. You must interface with the vibrating field of the problem. A creator doesn't say, God, this mountain is huge. A creator says, mountain, move. This is not arrogance. This is alignment with the physics of creation. Dr. Masaru Emoto showed that water exposed to positive words forms beautiful, coherent crystals. Words like love, thank you, and peace. Words of hatred create chaotic, distorted patterns. Your body is water. 70% of you is responding to every word you speak. Your blood is 90% water. Every time you speak, you are restructuring the geometry of your own blood. You are vibrating your own cells into health or into disease. When Jesus said, my words are spirit in life, he meant that literally. His frequency healed the geometry of the body. Every sacred tradition ends prayer with sound. Amen. Amin. Aum. These are not punctuation marks. They are sealing frequencies. Amen means it is established. It is the anchor, a vibrational command that collapses possibility into physical form. A double-minded person scatters their frequency. A single-minded person becomes a laser. When you say Amen, you're locking the wave function. To use your voice the way Jesus used His, you follow the same pattern the universe follows. Silence, intention, sound, form. Step one, silence. Return to inner stillness. Sound from chaos creates chaos. Sound from stillness creates order. Connect with the I am inside you. Step two, intention. Feel the reality you want before you speak it. Load the frequency. Step three, command. Use your voice. Out loud, I am healed. I am guided. I am supported. I am stepping into abundance. Speak as a fact, not a hope. Feel the vibration in your chest. Feel it reorganizing the space around you. Step four, consistency. Keep the frequency coherent. Don't cancel your declaration 10 minutes later with doubt. A steady stream cuts the canyon. You're not just a biological machine. You are a biological instrument. Your throat is a portal. Your voice is a tuning fork. Your words are commands shaping the quantum field. Jesus didn't say, watch what I can do. He said, the works I do, you will do also. He was waiting for us to understand that our voice is not commentary, it is creation. So stop telling the universe what is wrong. 
Start telling the universe what is true. Speak to your mountain and watch it move. If this message resonated with your spirit, you are welcome to subscribe and stay connected to this frequency. Your voice has power. Use it. Welcome home.